Good morning, friends, and welcome back. I have several of these mismatched wine glasses in the house that I really don't use. We don't use them anymore, even for company, because they're too, too many different types. So I thought I would upcycle them into some votives for the upcoming fall slash Halloween season. And all of the links to the products are on my website, but the one link to my website is right below this video. And it really helps me out when you get your supplies and anything else you need through my website, which goes through Amazon. Before we start this video, I thought I would let you know what we're going to need for this project. And of course, all, as always, decoupage glue, that is napkin decoupage glue. This is actually rice paper. It's calligraphy paper, which I will have on my website. It worked beautifully for this project. And this way you can make your own papers and your own designs. Because the other thing that I did was I took these inks and these are a combination of dye inks. There are pigment inks, but for today I am working with dye inks. And since I've learned a few things over the summer, I thought that I would pass along some of that knowledge to you because I used to get confused. What's a dye ink? What's a pigment ink? What do you stamp with? What's waterproof? So I will have all of these listed on my website. And the cool thing is they also come in these little kits where they've got all of them matching or complementary colors in one little kit, like with these little memento stamps. I also wanted to use a different brand in a larger ink pad, and that's because I knew which colors I wanted to use in this case. We'll also be needing these small round ink blending tools, or if you have them, the small sponge daubers. And again, I'll have all of this on my website for you. And you probably have your own supply of stamps, or you may want to check out the website to see what else you can use. And some stencils, if you have them on hand, you'll be able to use those too. So that makes this project interesting in that you can design whatever you would like. Make sure your stamp fits over the surface that you're working on though. So this is the rice paper, and you probably want to work over a craft sheet or something. This ink can go right through the paper and stain what's ever underneath, so you want to be careful about that. And I'm taking these complementary colors that all came in one kit, and because I'm going for a fall-themed votive, I am going to use a combination of several different colors, but I wanted to tell you the other few things that are worth noting about this. You always want to start with the lightest color. Now, this almost looks like it's dried out, but it's actually meant to look a little bit lighter that you don't want something intense. You can really build on the color, which means you would just keep applying this. So what I did was I put the ink blending tool I'm pouncing it onto the surface and of the pad and then pouncing it onto the paper. Now ink will hold up under decoupage glue and it can get wet and it won't run or bleed. Pigment ink you can't do that with. Pigment ink is the one that you use for stamping when you want to emboss it or apply other things over the surface. This really is for blending and for color. So what I'm going to do, that's what the ink stamp is used for when you just want to do blending or add color. And I'm going to kind of go all around here and blend in the different colors. And the reason you want to go with the light color first is because once something is too dark, it's very hard to lighten it. But if it's light and you want to make it darker, then you can build on it. Or if you're not crazy about the color, you can blend some of the colors. And now I'll speed this up a little because I'm going to add a couple of different colors. And you, I'm trying to go for the fall themed colors. Whatever I see out in the yard, the browns, the rust, the orange, the yellow, the amber, that type of thing. There's also a little bit of burgundy out there which I will throw in at the end because it is the darkest color. And I'm just going to go all around and I'm not just pouncing this down. And let me slow it down for a second. I am blending this. So you see how I'm going over some areas and I am blending the color out. It dries very quickly, by the way, but we still will want a heat gun over this. So I'm going to continue to go all around this and blend it until I'm happy. 
and you want to blend as much as you can until you think you have enough to cover your wine glass and once I'm happy with that color I'm going to take my darkest colored ink pad and I'm going to apply it to my stencil and I'm going to press this I'm sorry my stamp I'm going to press my stamp around in a few different places on here and then I'm also going to take my stencil I'll bet this stencil is easily 20 years old I have the worst habit of not throwing these things away but here's why because I always end up using them again <laughs> and I'm going to follow that same procedure I'm going to ink the stamp a little bit heavier this time and go in with a couple of different colors to add a little bit more interest to that leaf and I'm also going to use some of the other stencils on here around this same piece of paper now I'll use my heat tool to dry it for about 20 seconds and now what I'm going to do is tear out all of these tissue papers that I colored in different sizes I do want to make sure though that when I get to the stamped like this area right here with the stamped dragonfly I don't want to tear that in half I want to tear that out as a whole piece same with those items that I stenciled I want to make sure I have the whole leaf there and the rest of the paper I'm just going to tear into pieces to decoupage all around the glass and now I'm taking my napkin decoupage glue and a paintbrush and I'm going to layer the papers over the glass so I just apply the decoupage glue over my surface I lay this paper down and because it is a bit sturdier than napkins you can go right over this paper and I will continue to do this all around the glass and it's okay to overlap you would may, maybe want some areas a little bit more sheer than others and of course when I get to these images like the dragonfly the stamped images or the stenciled images I really want to place those in an area that's pretty prominent so that that's kind of the focal piece of my glass and then I'll just go around the rest of the glass following these same steps and by the way it is okay to overlap up at the top there we'll just file that away later and now that the whole glass is covered I'm taking one more coat of decoupage glue and I'm going to coat the whole surface of the glass and I am going to let this part of it dry because when we come back or when I come back what I'm going to do is decoupage not the stem but just that bottom part so now that this top piece is dry I want to make sure I have a piece that's large enough to accommodate that bottom piece of glass and I will be decoupaging these papers face up on the bottom so just make sure you have your papers facing the right way and I'm going to do the same thing just cover this whole bottom area turn the glass upside down and let it dry and again it's okay to go outside of the lines there because we're going to file that away in a minute and now that everything's dry I'm taking a nail file because the nail files are very easy to get into uh, you can get into all of these spaces with the nail file and I'm just going to file in one direction and the reason for that see I'm pulling it towards the center the reason for that is because just like with your own fingernails you never want to go in a back and forth motion in this instance it will pull the paper away even if it's only microscopic and you can't see it it will pull those edges away and the decoupage can wear off after a while so you want to make sure you file in one direction I'm going to go around this whole surface and then around the base same thing pull the file towards you and remove any of the excess took a little bit of a damp rag slightly damp and just wiped away any of the dust that was there from filing and now what I want to do is show you this really cool product by Viva Decor it's called Rusty Patina and it's a little hard to see the end result on camera but as I was applying this now you can probably see it here it's got this really beautiful shimmer it's going to work perfectly on this particular product project rather and what I'm just going to do is put a little bit on my fingertip lightly and I'm going to go around the glass in different areas just to add some depth and richness to this I don't know if you can see it in the video but it also adds this really tiny amount of sheen I don't want to say glitter 
but there is a certain luminosity that it adds to the glass which makes it even prettier so I'm and this dries pretty quickly while I'm doing it it's drying so I'm going to go around the rest of the glass and keep adding the rusty patina and here is how this looks now that that part of it's done and it's a really subtle touch, but it definitely adds this beautiful richness that I can see. I think I can see it better in person than you can see it on the video. And because I want a little bit of burgundy added into this project, I'm going to use a light coating of glitter. And I really wanted to spray this outside, but it was pouring out. So what I did was I used the triple thick painted it on with a brush and then I very lightly went over this with some glitter and around the top I kind of wanted to do what you would do with a margarita glass which was pour the glitter down onto the surface and then just put the rim through that so that there's a tiny coating of glitter around the top of this. And once the top of this have, has dried, you can see that very thin line of glitter along the top there. And you can barely see it on the glass. I did really want a light coating of it. I'm now going to do the same thing on the bottom. Now I won't add glitter to the bottom, you won't be able to see it, but I will do, what I will do is go around the outside rim and place that in the glitter. And then I'll have a light coating around there also. Now, if you're afraid to experiment on wine glasses, this is a baby food jar. You may have any type of glass jar, but I found this one to be just large enough and just small enough so that I wasn't wasting anything. And I also discovered I didn't like too much of one color. I didn't like too much glitter. Up at the top there, the rim, that's a different color glitter, believe it or not, than the one I did end up using. And I, th I thought it was not right for this project. So it really helped to experiment first on something smaller that if I didn't like it, I could just toss it. And if I like it, I could put a votive in there as well. <laughs> so you might want to practice on a baby food jar first. Now I wanted to add one more thing to this and that was this piece of uh, burgundy ribbon with little gems on it. I don't know if I can find these on my website but you can certainly find a bunch of these in Joanne Fabrics. So what I did was I took this E6000 glue and a toothpick because I wanted a very thin line of this across this ribbon and I just applied it all around the top. It was a little challenging. You kind of have to take your time with this so that there aren't any wrinkles or gaps or lumps. You just want to pull it tightly and work in sections at a time. And now that this is all done, I wanted to show it to you in a couple of different lights. This does have a candle in it during the daylight and this was before I put the beads around the top of it. Same with at nighttime, I wanted to show you how this looked with a candle in it in the dark. And there's quite a difference from how it began as just a plain wine glass. And now this is how I'm displaying it. I put all of the ribbon on it, everything. There's a little bit of glare on my dragonfly there. But as you can see, I have the matching burgundy ribbon down at the base. It's sitting right in front of a nice window with the greenery in the background. Those are evergreen, so that's going to stay like that all through the winter, <laughs> which is a perfect backdrop for a fall-themed project. And as always, my friends, I hope you enjoyed this project. Thank you so much for subscribing and your lovely compliments and your thumbs up. And Upcycle with Decoupage is also on Facebook. If you go over and like and follow the page, you'll be notified every week when I put a new video out. The link for all of the products you need and my website is just below this video in the description box. Just click on that and it'll take you right over to my website. And as always, guys, I will see you next week with another video. Thanks again, my friends. Bye-bye.